Our series is called Reversing Witchcraft Damage. Reversing Witchcraft Damage. And today's uh, teaching is called Head Injury and Poverty Mentality. <laughs> That's a man. Don't say it too loud, though. But I would like if you say it loud. Head injury and what? Shout it. Head what? Amen. I'm sure some people just had poverty mentality. They want to switch off. Uh, don't switch off too fast. Because you have it. Pastor, why did you say so? I would explain. Be ready to be shocked. Because one of the greatest deliverance challenges is injury to your head. And we're talking of spiritual injury. Why is it so? Because it touches every aspect of your life. When the head is injured, when is it? A head is injured when demonic forces begin to function and control it. Spiritual injury is not the same as physical injury. As long as your head is not performing as it should, it has been injured. It's now being controlled by powers that ought not to be there. And it begins to work against every purpose of God in your life. But for all the consequences of Injury, the worst is control of how you think. Control of how you think. Your destiny, your success, your achievement in this world is a function of how you think. Remove thought, then you are, you are done. People hire you because of your thought process. People employ you because of the power of or the superiority, or the creativity of your thoughts. People are paid millions. People are buying iPhone, iDis, iDat, all these gadgets, because some people reasoned and brought us something that is being useful. Your thought is your power. Your thought is your greatness. Your thought is the door opener, the master key to the achievement of your divine purpose. That's why it's a very important instrument, both for God and for the devil. Your thought. And where is your thought function? It's in your head. Your mind is not in your, uh, your, in your buttocks. It's not in your head. I mean, your legs. It's in your head. All the mental faculties are not in your stomach. Are they? They are in your head. So the enemy goes for your head. That young man, it was the head he went for. And he was so sure that he would not go for the head. Everything he wanted him to do was in the head. How? He went to the mind. How? He programmed the mind. Now he began to use the mind in the way that was going to use him to make him end up like others. You are not great because you are like somebody else. Your greatness is in your difference. I will repeat it. You are not great because you look like somebody else. No. Or you, you wrote down what others did. No. That doesn't make you great. Or you can interpret something that somebody else has written. No. That doesn't make you really great. Your greatness is your distinction. The, the mind power that sets you apart from the rest of the people. That makes you great. You can never be great because you look like somebody else. Then all of you are the same. But the day you begin to do something no other person can do, you attain leadership. And that is where the mind is very, very important. 
And I want you to open. Some of you don't have this easy translation. I think you should, you should graduate to have multiple translations. There, there, download them and go to easy translation and see what the Bible said about this scripture we all know. I was, I was carried away when I read easy translation of it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Easy translation is a wonderful one. It's something you should put on your ringtone. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Uh -huh. Easy English Bible translation. Yeah, I think so. Or is it the other? Easy, it, I don't know. Easy now. to read. Maybe it's easy. I don't know. Read it too. I will see which one. Pro Proverbs 4, 23. 23. Uh -huh. Easy to read version. Mm -hmm. Above all, be careful what you think mm -hmm. because your thoughts control your life. Above all, what? Be careful what you think. Pastor, please read it again. You, did you understand what you said now? You say, above all, above all, meaning apart from every other thing, regardless of every other thing, above means above, doesn't mean below, mean more. Importantly, is it not so? Critically, importantly, is it not so? Then, easy translation. Mm -hmm. Be careful how you think. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts make you the person that you are. Did you hear that? Please repeat that one. He said, Be careful how you think. Because what? Your thoughts make makes you, you the person, the person that, that you are. are. That is why Satan goes for it. That is why God is, imp is, is, is interested in your thought. And that is why head injury is the worst injury you can ever have in your life. Once you are spiritually injured in your head, your mind is what they go for. When they attack that mind, you lose your personality. You lose who you are. Pastor, please read that in again. Oh, I love that one. The last one. It's super. Be careful how you think. Yes. Your thoughts make you the person that you are. So it's your thought that creates who you are. It's your thought that makes who you are. If I say your original identity is your thought. That you are going to be a president tomorrow is in your thought. That you are going to rule the world is in your thought. That you are going to fail is in your thought. That you will not make it is in your thought. That you are going to be a criminal is in your thought. So Satan is interested in your thought. God designed your thought so that he can feed you with his ways. So you can become who he wants you to be. But Satan said no. He will challenge it. You know, can I, can I talk to you? Let, let me tell you, whoever, wherever you are, if you, I, I look at people who think there is no God, I laugh. God. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's stupid. Believe me, it's in the thought process. God, the one that talks to me, that reveals this, that talks this. It's more real than you are real. But he has chosen to reveal himself in the way he has chosen to reveal himself. He said, you shall find me when you seek me with how many things? Where is your heart? Your mind. So if I go to that mind and confuse it, you will not seek him. You say it's not there. So what is happening is that people, especially, you see them, they say they are in advanced country. Now, they are crashing. They are having a problem. You see, they say science will solve everything. We thank God for what science has achieved. But science is not going to do more than what it can do, human beings. Science will remain inferior to the almighty. They are still figuring out how you can pray for somebody and something happens. I think they are getting tired. The mind is a battlefield. 
Witchcraft powers understand this very well. So they target your head. What do they do? They reprogram your mindset. Let, let me tell you something. You are never poor until you are poor in your mind. Even if you don't have anything now, but the poverty is not in your mind, you will never be poor. You don't understand what I'm saying. Even if you don't have one dollar right now, but in your mindset, you don't have accommodation for poverty, you will never be poor. It's just a matter of time. You will never die poor. That mindset decides whether you will end up poor or you end up wealthy. Which is which sharp powers. They are, that's why God says, suffer no which to live. They love to go and manipulate your mindset. They like to do it. They go to your mindset and change it. And one of the worst things they do is witchcraft mentality and poverty mentality. You see, when we say poverty mentality, it's different from witchcraft mentality. Mm, it's not the same. Poverty mentality is a to I'll give you a lowdown. You will discover that you have it. You will discover that 99.9% .9 who are listening to me now have it. I, I will take you, I will give you some scriptures as proof so that when you go home, you can check it up. Once you have poverty mentality, you are done. Your greatness is quashed. People will see good visions and good things about you, but you will never achieve them. The capacity to do so is your mind. The mind is the engine of your creativity. The mind sets you apart. That's why you can go to cl class with somebody, have the same degree, but your performance is different. And your attainment is li in life is different. Your mind plays a major function. Mind. Even there in Europe, it's, although they understand in a different in, in so-called de developed world, the mindset is bought. They pay, they pay big time. They respect it. Here they destroy it. Africa is suffering. Anybody who has a good mindset in Africa must go out. They will capture me. <laughs> so, when we say poverty mindset, what does it mean? What does it mean? I'll give you just six. I was cutting it down. I thought I would just reduce it to three or four, but mm, there are too many. I'll give you just six. Maybe another time. I want you to understand what it is. If you have a poverty mindset, number one, you will, you have, you will be small-minded. Small-minded. You can't aim higher. Anything higher is a stress. Anything higher is a stress. You will be stressed. Some people go and do. Some people will learn a program that you will take one year to learn. They will learn it in 24 hours. They will not sleep. They will not rest. They work all night to learn that program get to do that thing and beat the record. Somebody will say, I will hire you. Name your price. Why? Others take six months. Others take three, three. Those, the best they used to have, takes 
three, three months, two, two, but you, 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 you overnight, you crack through. You, I say, eh? no, no, no. Um, <laughs> um, name your term. Can we, can we negotiate? Because he knows what is going to end from that your mind. It's your mind that they are buying. It's not your body. Hello? Nobody's buying your head. Because if you remove your mind, because it's a head. No, it's because the mind is there. If I remove your head, nobody wants you. The labor market, you don't need, they don't need you. Hello? So, if you have poverty mentality, you have a small mind. Small mindedness. You are, you don't, I, I, no, that one, I is too much. I, I, oh, there are many in Namibia. Oh, it makes me angry. It's annoying. A whole human being is satisfied to be in one, one shop, one kiosk. Will not even dare do anything else. But you use your phone that somebody else used their mind to do. You read this one. You do this one. You do HMS. Yeah. Chat, chat. We chat. V chat. Anima chat. And all those things. You, none of it makes you. You don't even think. What is my use in this world? Even to take ordinary Namibian material, local dress, and design it in a way that people will put it on show in Paris or something. No, no. What is that? I, it's too much. I don't even know that thing. She wanted to learn to sew a suit. I went there by mistake. I went there. She didn't. See, I saw them. There was, she was sweating, and she sewed that suit. And somebody wanted to go to do wedding. She never sewed suit before. She sews other things. She was looking. The tutor was on comp, on on, on uh, internet. I saw with my own Anya, my eyes. My place we call it Anya. But somebody in China will come to Namibia, take the dress that is made, Oshuambo dress, go to China and look at the shape of a Namibian. Look at two, look at three, look at four. He will make it to be like this. You bring it. Hey, hey, that one is very good. You go and take an account. And through what woman? Tomorrow now when he says, hey, who are you? Hey, take my poo He says, hey, he's uh, disrespecting me. What's your respect? Respect is end. The brain ends the respect. But your own is fallow. It's ossifying. It's become stale. And useless to humanity. But you eat food. You are occupying space, my friend. Say, I will not occupy space. <laughs> eh? <laughs> and, eh? Small mind. <laughs> when we say you have small mind, it means you lack boldness. You are, you are afraid to step into the unknown. You want to remain in the corridor of known. Familiar ground is not where the, the, the difference is. Everybody goes to familiar ground. The day you step to on unfamiliar ground where nobody has treaded, you become the king. Familiar ground is where everybody goes. Is it not so? It's familiar because everybody goes there. So people know it. But the day you, you step into an unfamiliar ground and you conquer it, my dear, they will begin to consult you. Am I lying? No. You become an automatic consultant. You set your price. I used to order my clothes from Niger. 
That's how we call Nigeria. Our flight, pay transport, everything. They, she looked at me one day. She got angry. Every cloth you see me wearing now from now, she's sewing it. Even this husband looking like uh, Bobo is the one who sewed it. <laughs> so I don't order cloth from outside anymore. I don't. I didn't teach her. She got challenged. No, you, you just stay like that. Through what? Fushini? Check us? Pick and pay? Tomorrow again? Through what? Fushini? Are you not bored? I get bored. Routine makes me angry. I don't like routine. That's why you come to this church, you will never see me preach the same thing. Since we started this ministry, you will never. Because my God will never let it. He will show me something different. I'm telling you, he will always show me. Yes. You, you, when, when they say, this place, nobody has gone there. A Namibian doesn't like to go there. Mathematic. I won. I will do police study. The day they will say that police study, there's one added small arithmetic. I, why? They say there's mathematics there. I, I'm not going. He will go. He will go. One, one young man left UNAM because there was a mathematic and went and began to be a taxi driver. Now he's busy impregnating women. What a useless life. It's mindset. Mindset of poverty. Witchcraft, they go there. They put it there. Once they put it there, they don't need to worry. It's, it's done. They just go and they just be watching you pass it. <laughs> they know what they put. Whoever has it, it shall go up today. Yeah. Let me tell you, God hates wimps. God doesn't like a coward. That's why the Bible says, the righteous shall be as bold. Jesus never said something that is familiar. Do you know why the Pharisees had a problem with Jesus? He was different. He said, this one does not teach like the Pharisees. He teaches like somebody with a what? Authority. Difference. They began to listen. When the Holy Spirit came, why did he not come without a bang? He came with a bang. They had a, 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 a strange sound. Everybody had it, you know? Strange sound. They were in the upper room. They came like tongues of fire. People could see it with their eyes. Why? To make something, you know, may God make you to be make a statement maker. Say it. I, I shall be a statement maker for my generation. I shall be a pace setter for my generation. Once you don't have poverty mentality, you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are in a hurry. You, you're looking for grounds to break. They say this, mm, say, what, what is wrong with it? What is it? Let me see. Ah, okay. You say what? Uh, you, got, you, got, you, you, you have challenged him. A person with small mind, a person who has small mind is never challenged. Wait, I will get there. You are not bold. Can I tell you something? If you do everything that others do, you can never be great. You will not. This Obambo mentality, everybody is a nurse, everybody is a this, everybody is a teacher, everybody is a, a, a what do they call child? A, Child what? Uh, there's one they call child whatever. Now everybody, I did, I did child whatever, child whatever. They're all looking for. <laughs> Early childhood. Oh. Somebody is in the north. He has a certificate. English, ah, I. English, do they speak our shwambo? I, I don't like English. I. But you want a job. Well paid. No, you have 
poverty mentality. Mm. <laughs> Wait, when they start after, how many of you know after? Hey, you see? Uh, we have master's degrees here. We have EFTA. How many of you know EFTA? One, two, three. Hey, God Almighty. <laughs> African free trade. When they started, Sadek must run. West Africa will swallow Sadek. Mark what I said today. Unless they change. You will see people who are aggressive to make money. Aggressive to, to go to the devil and collect whatever. Bible in this hand, Jesus in this hand, and they are pursuing what they are pursuing. They don't, they don't care. They, they, not only that, the whole of Sadek must, they will, they will sweat. Unless they find a way to uh, not make it look, because if it is free, as they are talking free, <laughs> I, I, I pity Sadek. Yeah. Down there. People are fighting poverty. They run from it. Anything goes. That's how they even go into doing criminal things. Also. That's why you see churches that are teaching them, using that aggressiveness, putting it in the right proportion that it will flow through the word of God and they will do right things with their creative mind. Amen. And you shall join them. Amen. No, you shall beat them. Amen. I said we shall beat them. Amen. I didn't say we shall, I withdraw, you shall join them. We shall beat them. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A young child, little boy, is using a scout. Big companies in Europe are paying him I say, they say he writes one program. Now, the lecturers from so -so -so are teaching him in primary. It's supposed to be primary school. But when he takes a computer and writes a program, he said, I read it. Uh, I, I kept it uh, because I'm waiting for a youth program in this church. I will read it. We'll put it on the screen. I, I, unless, I think I kept it. I subscribe. I may not have time to read all of it, but I flip through. I must be current. No, you. Mm -mm. He's the one that Lazarus them wrote. <laughs> if they didn't write, even that one, you will not read it. See, I shall be creative. I shall be creative. Therefore, my Spirit of poverty mindedness must die. In Jesus' name. That's one. Two. When you have poverty mindset, because your brain or your brother, your head is injured spiritually, you have what to call spiritual and mental insecurity. You are not secured. First of all, what does it mean? I will push, I will tell you. One, you settle for anything. You settle for less. That's why in the office, even though they know you can do well, they will pay you little. And use you more. That's what they do in Namibia. But when, when you come to me, I will tell you what to do. Like I told that my daughter, I said, take it. But we'll talk later. She knows. They will take you, they have seen that mindset, they want to crush it. Without incentive, the mindset dies. That's why when they buy you, because that's what they do, companies pay you, they incentivize you. They give you incentives that will 
make you to tax your mind and produce more for them. Here in Namibia, because of the culture of witchcraft, they will take that mind, pay you less than your value, and then kill you slowly. You lose initiative to be creative. Very soon, you become routine. It begin to be routine. You don't, you don't have the zeal to explore more. In any case, there's no incentive. Whatever you do, they will pay you less. But they, sitting up there, we pack in the money. But they have no incentive. They don't have any creativity whatsoever. That's how they quench creative minds in Namibia. Very wicked. They do it in almost every office that is in this country. Once you have a creative mind, they see it, they will employ you. And they will load you with so much job and pay you little. And then they will crush you. Every day you are dying. If you are in that case, write me, I will tell you what to do. The Bible says we shall we be as wise as who? <laughs> There's a way to it. Hmm? If you see somebody who has a mindset that can enhance the output of the company in Namibia, that person is in trouble. You are in trouble. Unless you know what to do, you are in trouble. They will spot you out and they will crush it. They will bring you under them and crush it. In a few years, you become like them. And they dump you. One of my sons went to a bank in this Namibia. They were having a problem. I don't want to mention He went to a bank. They could not manage themselves. They were wasteful. In less than, okay, let me say one year, he, he saved how many, how many millions? Maybe millions. They could not qualify. Even won awards from South Africa. Uh, sorry, uh, we cannot uh, extend your, your stay. Um, no, first of all, they were giving him some uh, peanuts. Then one day, when they saw that uh, he was going to, they have not finished to extract what they want from him, they increased the thing a little bit and they paid him some money. It looks like it's a good money. And then until he got the thing done, then they now brought somebody from another place and said, eh, teach this one how to do it. <laughs> She's making it. <laughs> yeah! That's Namibia. That is why when you see West Africa, you see people rushing to churches like this. Because there, we carry Jesus in this hand. We carry Jesus in this hand. And by our legs, we move to where we can destroy the enemy and occupy our space. That's what we do. By the time we finish this series, this, this one we're doing so. I wanna, I'll just introduce today. On Tuesday, we'll hammer it nicely. Amen. They do it to you. Uh -uh. That's why I introduced you to court. I taught court over a time. I took you to court. I showed you court. I gave you a bridge court. You saw the testimonies. You go to court and nail them. Nail them in the court. In the next day, they come to the office. They can't look at your eyes. And that thing, you will get it. <laughs> now maybe I want to uh, make uh, uh, drain oil. Now maybe I want to do uh, 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 green uh, uh, hydrogen, whatever. 
I, I'm just looking. Is it these people that are killing creativity that will supervise it? I want to see. That is a cutting edge industry. I want to see how they can do it. Where you don't, you don't, yes, unless you are a COVID member, you will not. Unless you are one of the ones that they used to uh, do what they do from the annus, you will not. I'm speaking, I'm a pastor. You can't do that with that. Oil is a vast industry. It will be catastrophic when foreigners will be the one running it. And Namibians are not too friendly with foreigners. Quote me. Another person will not come from outside and eat your food. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the time we finish, they will be coming here to recruit you. They will be begging you to come and work for them because of the mind that you are having. That you will go there and you will change. You do things that nobody can do in Namibia. Yes. Say, I must be different. I must be different. And nothing can stop it. I, I didn't hear it. I Say that, that your mask will be vibrating. I must be different. And no para can stop it. Say, I'm not cheap. Eh? And I will never be cheap. When you start settling for less, you have a poverty mentality. You are washed. Anybody who settles for less loses aggressiveness, loses can never eat. You can't motivate somebody who settles for it. It's difficult. It's impossible. Ah, uh, no, it's okay. I'm, 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 I'm quite satisfied with this salary. It's fine. Uh, those ones mean I will have to do extra. No, I, I think, okay, it's fine. I, I, I'm okay. Uh, I'm not ready for that now. It, thousand and one excuses they will give you. That's not it. Poverty mentality. <laughs> when you hear it, think, oh, poverty, no. Once you have that spiritual and mental insecurity, you are not secured. You don't push boundaries. You know what they call pushing new boundaries? Eh? Meaning you do things that will move the human race forward. You can't do it. You don't have the mental, you are insecure. You are not stable. In, in your spirit, you are not stable. So you would like to settle where the, the I's have been crossed, I mean dotted, and the T's have been crossed. So you stay there. The familiar ground. In this church, I'm, put an, I'm putting an end, and I say it again, to, to salary mentality. Amen. We shall be having people with with creative industry. Yeah. Uh, before I die, it must happen. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you will be coming with your airplane to come and pick me to come and see your office. Yeah. Hey, shout it! Yeah. Uh, say, Pastor, pack your airplane. Let me carry you on my own yeah. to take you to that place. Yeah. You are saying now it looks impossible. But I was telling one time, I said, there will be a time. Mercedes will become like a beetle in our church. Yeah. Is it not happening? I go to a car park. You see Mercedes, 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 Mercedes. Yeah. If you go to MZ Motors now, say life changer, say, oh, welcome, you're welcome. Yeah. Ah, somebody clap for Jesus. Yeah. So it will happen. Now, you see, once you have that insecurity, you can't step into a no ground. Some of you can't even come here and give testimony. When you reach here, you lose your mind. Uh, and I went to the farm, and I, don't, I think I was looking for the farm, and then it's, it's like I saw it, but I, I, don't, I wasn't sure again whether it was farm. Uh, uh, Pastor, did I say farm now? <laughs> I said, what is the testimony? 
I'll be looking at it and say, God, what is the testimony? Then you rumble and then rumble. I soak my testimony blood. Which one? <laughs> I'll be wondering, what did you soak? You soak confusion in the blood of Jesus? No. Something is wrong with the mind. And as long as that is wrong, let me tell you something. Problem is the key to promotion. So when problem comes, a sharp mind notices it and moves towards it because he must cross it. Now, a mind that settles for nothing withdraws and looks for another way to bypass it. No, 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 no. God did not carry the children of Israel and put them in the promised land and say, now that's it. Enter the house and everybody go to your house and sleep. No! He said, I'm yourself. I'm ready to fight. Is it not so? And they fought for how many years? Is it that God does not know how to fight, fight for them? No. It doesn't work so. That's not the law of God. A laborer is fit for his wages. But I have put an end to wages in this church. Yeah. We shall be employing people. Yeah. Shall! Yeah. In the name of Jesus. It took only 12 apostles to change the world. If they were having poverty mentality, we would not have this Bible. Hmm? Clap for the Lord for the apostles. So, once you have that insecurity of your mind, of your spirit, you will not want to push uh, uh, new grounds, new boundaries. One, two, you will settle for less. Three, you will justify your failure. And your limitations, you will justify them. You find a way to excuse your failure and excuse your limitation. Uh, you know, it's because, you know, in, you see, uh, um, no, uh, uh. I told you, he's here, look at him. He will call me, he say, uh, Dad, I've not sold anything. No. Uh, what shall I do? I said, Okay, run to the. Uh, he's, he's studying, eh? He's studying, eh? Uh, uh, I said, okay, run to the. Uh, uh, go and pray like this. You will run. Click, 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 click. Pray, pray, pray. You will pray, pray, pray. You come out. Uh, 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 isn't that what you are doing? Uh, then you so what is this doing? Uh, 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 laptops. Uh, until they started beating all of them in that place. He will call me anywhere. I was okay. Go and do like this. He will do like this. He will say, he started beating them. Any commissions that. Many of them who have been sitting down there could not earn it. And he was still going to school. And he was still the chief usher. Pastor, I'm stressed. Uh, 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 I, I can't come for the, uh, the, the workers uh, uh, because I, I, I need to study for my exam tomorrow. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was studying from there. He go and write. He's running to church. Uh, he's here. Yeah, and his brother. The way I told you about his brother before. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. That's how they did. Until how many A's did you get in your uh, polytech that time? Is it 29 or 27? Some of, I don't know how many you were sharing between. Until they stopped doing a, a distinction award. They are the ones who closed it because they saw that somebody was coming to collect every distinction. They, they phased it out. You shall close certain chapters in Namibia. Yeah. Then he finished and started teaching those he met there. Became their lecturer and left them there. The mathematics teacher will come and take your, beg your resident pastor to come and organize uh, extra classes for the mathematics people in, in Polytech for some money. And they will go organize themselves. These people have bankers. Oga, oga managers in banks that are supposed to be working with money. Yes, they don't know the mass. He will be teaching them. Namibia has created a system that promotes mediocrity. And that is why creativity is dead. And I'm, I'm just watching to see how they are going to do those two industries, powerful industries that they are putting together. I want to see how they do Fort Industrial. Those are radical 
cutting edge lifestyle, technology, moves, economy. You can't do this dolingitis, which is craftism, that can promote it. Never. Covunism will die naturally. Because he can't cope with it. No. And life changes will rise. So we are rising! Listen, if you are here, you are justifying your failure and your limitation. You are spiritually and mentally insecure. You have spirit of, uh, uh, you have mental, uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, poverty mentality. You have poverty mentality because a limitation is a limitation as long as you can stand behind it. But if you push it, it ceases to be a limitation. There was a time I took my books to revive us. They didn't want to take my books. They say, I'm not a, a TV star. So I said, okay. We left them. We created our eye store. Next time I met the woman who told me this in the library, I came to register some of my books. He said, oh. He was ashamed. I said, it's okay. I understand. The only thing is that I refuse to accept it. He said, that's cool. That's cool. He was so, he was so fly, carried away. You saw the printing. He said, wait. I said, it's printed here in Namibia. Oh, we have a house. You can, you can buy our books online. I said, oh. Oh. We sell more than there now. They sell in Namibia. We sell all over the world. And we are just starting. Because we say we not, we not, oh, we not stop. Look, the last book now, I'm, I'm hearing the book now, they say it's so big that it will be so heavy. They say they want to break it up into three books. From one book. Volume one, volume two, volume three. The book, when you cut it, Satan will say, I bow. Before you, you pray, you say, I bow. You, you say, I bow. How to go to court is there. What to do in court is there. How to finish somebody in court is there. What to have my in court is there. Somebody say, I'm When you carry the entire office, let me see who. Smart, you go to the toilet and go to court. Over, over that, your boss. Fire will burn him on that uh, witchcraft chair where he's sitting. What he say, will not approve, he will approve it by force. This idea, once you, they see that we have a program, they will post you to uh, an assignment in Ochibingwe, uh, uh, where there's no, 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 no internet, no whatever, and uh, they take you to one place where they will know, so that in one lodge, where only, the only kudus have the, are the internet that are there with their horns, so that you don't connect, so that you don't challenge your things that they stole from you. go to court. The old guy will not sleep in the house. The agenda will be cancelled. And I'm looking for somebody who will translate our power shift in German. That person must show up. German translation. We must translate it. Maybe I will ask my daughter-in-law to do it. I know she's busy. We must do it and post it online. We have people to collect from there. If you are not going to read it, Germans will read it. I didn't hear ma'am. If you are somebody here who explains your limitation, you have a poverty mindset. It's the worst sign of it. And God will walk away from you. He will leave you there. 
You just notice that nothing is happening. No, nothing new is happening. And it's because, and, and, and it is because, and so, what did you do about that because? Why must you be the only one because in, because in? That because must be turned to testimony. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And if you have that mindset of physical number three, now I'm talking, is it number two? Yeah. yeah, number three. You will always associate with failures like yourself. Best of the same feather. They go to witchcraft meeting together. You will never say, I will do something. Why must it be, if I cannot get a job, then I cannot do anything again? Who said that job is your destiny? Where is it written? She, she has accounting. She went to university. She didn't marry Dundee. She went to university. No, she, 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 you saw what the testimony she gave there. Everything. She went to university. She studied. She, has, she, she went to school. She graduated. I uh, mean, you didn't. Uh -huh. With Pali to keep for it. Pali can stay. And now reactivate. Education should not be dogmatic when it comes to, uh, okay, I cannot fix this slide because I, I didn't do uh, electronics or electrical engineering. Uh, I'm not uh, Isaiah <laughs> or Sam. No. You must be ready to do whatever needs to be done as long as it's legal. It's permitted. Say it's permitted. It's yes. That's when God will open doors for you. You know, I discovered something. I, I discovered that God doesn't have limit. We have limit. We decide that this is the limit of God in our lives. Eh? It's you that put limits to God. God say, is anything too hard for me? It's not you that say, no, I think this one is too hard for God. I will not ask it. I think I cannot do it, so let me leave God out of it. It's you, me and you. It's us. It's us. Check. I'm not lying. It's true. The, uh, the devil never tell you, no, this one I can't do it. Is it in the Bible? No. No. See, it's you that says, okay, no, I think God cannot do this. Even if you don't voice it, your action tells it. <laughs> From today, you shall be talking a new story. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, let me, let me give you three scriptures on this to justify before I finish the remaining three. Oh, God help me. Proverbs 24. Verse 33 to 34. Proverbs chapter 24. 33 to 34. 33 to 34. I will read it. A little sleep, a little it slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall what? Poverty come like a what? A prowler. And you are need like an armed man. So if you are lazy, you have limitations. You want to just, uh, I can't do it, and uh, it, poverty will come. Proverbs 28, verse 19. Proverbs 28, verse 19. Verse 19. Ill tills his land, we have plenty of bread. Yes. But ill follows frivolity, will we have, we'll have poverty, poverty enough. Is that giving excuses? Instead of tilling the ground. He said, no, I can't till the ground. God told Isaac, Isaac, till that ground and I will water it. If Isaac said, God, I don't think, don't you see that there's no, it's too hard, I can't make it. Do you think it was easy for Isaac them to till a ground where rain never fell for maybe three years, four years? It was not easy, was it? They suffered to till it, but God said, till it. Why is it that heaven didn't make grrr, and everything is tilled? You think God cannot say, land till, and it till. No, you must make effort. You must step out. It's when you step out in faith that God will finish the rest. Isaac stepped out because he had the word of God, and God watered without rain. 
everything he planted. The man became the only source of wealth, I mean, source of food in the uh, community or nation, and he became wealthy from it. God will lead you to the way where you will make your family name shine. And bring glory to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's only when you start rising that witchcraft will be ashamed in Namibia. Those who think they can see your glory and use it to become directors, permanent secretaries, minister, this minister, that whatever, whoever they are, whether in Namibia or anywhere, even in my own country, it doesn't matter. But when we start shining, they will all be ashamed. And shine, you shall shine. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs 13, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13, verse, verse 20. 20. New King James Version. He who works with wise men will be wise. Yeah. But the companion oh. of fools will, will be, be destroyed. destroyed. Yeah. You keep on associating with those who will not add value to your life. You associate with failures. People will not challenge your, your, your creativity. Somebody is somewhere. You, you, you are even better than the person. In Namibia, here, once somebody, especially you see them, you see you are working with all the people. They all look alike. They all have the same failure. They all have the same demon, the same spirit. They are all living at the same level. So you get comforted because they are the same like you. There's no greatness in that. You have a poverty mentality. It is when you move with those who are better than you that you are challenged to be like them or beat them. Yeah. You move with those who are better. You move with those who, are, who, who seem to be more intelligent or more successful in life. Yes, that, it means you have a, a creative mind. You want to move. Yes, you, you, are, not, you are not satisfied with where you are. That's why you're moving with people like that. Am I communicating with somebody? Stop moving with people like you. People are at the same level with you. And I'm not saying you should make them your enemies. But you move with people, even if they are all the same level, but all of you are aspiring. You have this spirit of, I am settled for now. Now I'm, I'm going to do something. Like you see in Youth for Christ, yeah, I like them. You know, they, they, they are great. see them together moving. They want to move something. They, want to move. they don't want to be like their parents. Which kind of parents? I won. They don't do kusha, shashi. They speak English. Nice command. Polish English. Not the type of alias. Manu. Eh? Yes of yesterday. Sekekesti. <laughs> Sekekesti. No! You speak Polish English because you are looking for Poland. <laughs> Not of Ambuland. There's a difference between Poland and of Ambuland. They are all land, land, but one has Pole. The other one has Vam. <laughs> they are not the same. <laughs> Say hallelujah. We are must go there. We are going there. Say, I'm going there. I'm going there. Listen, you see this, this one where we are now? We need to, I'm just introducing this thing. On Tuesday, we need to kill that spirit. See, don't come with uh, all those high heels. Come with flash shoes. So when you're falling, you fall nice. <laughs> don't give a shot's kick that will make them uh, stay like this for some time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, Move with people that will add value to your life. Yes. Look at those who are, a child of God, we see somebody who is better than him. You say, oh Lord, ah, I thank you for the life of this person. Oh, oh Lord, make me to be like this person. You first thank God for the life of the, no, here, yeah, when you see the person, you use the eye and cut the person down. Then you move with your people. He's still full of himself. No, you are so empty of yourself. If he's full of himself, you are empty of yourself. That's why you are, you are, you are jealous. 
A person who does not have poverty mentality is challenged by people who are better. Yes, you, are, you feel challenged. Nobody tells you. You just see it. You have it in your mind. You are never satisfied with little. You don't get satisfied with where you are and become comfortable. No, you have a problem, but you don't let that problem settle your life. You sh every time you are challenging the problem in your mind, not that you are getting worried, no, not that you are getting, no, anxious, no, but you say, no, it can't be my end. There was a time this church didn't have a building. We didn't have a name. But when they saw the way we were appearing here, okay, they called us Church of Rich People. Amen. Amen. Up to tomorrow, go and ask people in, in this cemetery. They say we have an ATM. <laughs> there was a day they stopped us, they say, can we come and uh, also collect our money from the ATM? I said, which ATM? He said, ah, ATM in your church. Oh, man. <laughs> I looked at Meme. I said, Meme, what is he saying? Meme said, ah, they have a belief that we have ATM in our church. That's why people, when they enter here, they just cash in and buy a car, and they dress well, and they look nice. I said, ah, Jesus is our ATM. <laughs> Clap for Jesus louder than that. Amen. Listen. I noticed what I saw in West Africa. I saw what Pentecostalism in its true form. How it galvanized the younger generation. How it brought out what we now have happening in that place. Mindsets that are on fire for Christ and on fire to take the world for Christ. They don't settle for small. They are aggressive. These ones, you see them, they don't rest. I keep on telling them, stop, it's enough. The pastor, I had to stop him. Remember? I'm banned, many of you, when I'm going home, I collect him so that you don't finish him. Because they will not rest. The same for him. Yeah, yeah. why? They want to get it. They want to capture it. She doesn't rest. Even the, the husband, who he has, you can see, now, he had the testimony. Was he resting? Uh, I even called him. He didn't answer. He was busy uh, tendering the tender. Amen. We don't call it contract. We call it tender. Amen. According to Paul, he's the Mr. Tender. From today, when you speak, people will listen. Amen. Wherever you go, you shall make a difference. Amen. The wisdom that will come out of your mouth will change Namibia. It will change Africa. It will change the world. If you believe in shout that amen loud. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Number four. Now our, our people are going to cry. I will hit you now. Okay. This remaining three will hit you nicely. A person who has a poverty mindset is ordinary. Pedestal. In our look, outlook, you look trash, you talk trash, you wear trash, you move with trash. You pray for glory, but you have no glory. You avoid whatever glorifies. Some of you, if I give you money now, say go and buy something in the shop. The shock you will give us, we we'll have to put ambulance nearby. <laughs> you pick something that does not correspond with your star. Then they will come here when the demon star manifests. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't know who she is, so she's wearing those things. So we we took we took the star, we took the things back. So we start again, another again. We keep on repeating class. You are beautiful, but you are trash. Why? By choice. 
you chose to be a task because you are in this ministry, you've been hearing. It's not the first time I'm teaching this. You've been hearing it, but you refuse to this. You refuse to change. Yeah. In Namibia, you see a, a woman. When you see the woman, beautiful, you look at the man. Oh, say, where did he come from? It's like the man was imported into Namibia. And by the way, why is it that where they are importing the man, they don't import men? It's you that will make yourself a man. Nobody will make you. You are a man by what you make yourself. You wear like a man. You dress, I mean, you come where it doesn't fit or is oversized or is dead or is what. And you want to, a woman, no woman will dress finish after he has done all the accounts in all the shops only to surrender to you. It's, it's not fair. And the woman say, eh? mm -hmm. Now let me come to the woman. <laughs> yeah, some of, the, some of you. If I ask, I also now organize, let's look at the bra some of you are wearing. Your bra is out of size. You don't know your size. You don't know your shape. You don't know your, your bra is attacking angels. Hey, I'm talking. He's attacking angels. When they see, they say, oh, they start singing holy, holy. <laughs> to maintain their holiness. Just brow. If I go and ask two of you, what is your, uh, my man taught me, what is your cap? You call it cap. He said, Pastor, what is that? Uh, bra, you just take anyone. Put it. The one for sports, you wear it to Sunday. <laughs> yeah? So when you say in Jesus' name, it's in Jesus' name. One day I will beg my man, maybe you will lead all of you to wear the zebra. And then they will measure your cap and say, this is your size. This is your... We are going to do it all. Yeah, that church where they measure the bra of women. <laughs> yeah. You don't present yourself and the way you present yourself does not correspond with your style. So they will always steal that glory because the statement you are making is that I don't care about that stuff. Esau said, what is that bad right to me? I'm hungry. Give me the food. Huh? Jacob says, why? He swore. Why? He doesn't have, he doesn't, want, he doesn't care. What, what is bad? I'm hungry. I, I want to, now it matters. Not, uh, I don't care about that. And the Bible says, and so Esau despised his bad right. He never got it back. There's no God of Esau. The Edomites, I'm still looking for where they are. I haven't seen them. Because the, the one I'm seeing, if that is the place they are showing, how many times I've seen the, the documentary about this where I see only gullies. I didn't see where people ever settled. You shall not disappear from history. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You need to wake up. There is a relay. I learned that. God taught me. There, is a, there are things you should not do. There are things you should do depending on your style. And I want you to say, in this church, if you sit in this church for six months, you are not a normal star. You either be five or seven. There's no other way. You better know it. I will keep saying it because they want you to forget it. And those two stars are deadly. What they demand is deadly. Hmm? They demand a lot. You have to fight. Sometimes you stay three, four, five years. Nothing is moving. But everything is moving. Amen. Then one day, poof. Amen. That's how it works. That's how it works. 
That's why you teach. You know why? Because five star and seven star, they are not common. Uh, I've never seen an assembly of such in my life. This is the first time. Amen. In a church, you see a church of two, three thousand people. Once five star. Had this is I, I never saw. And if you see the person is harassed. Because every demon wants that stuff. So it looks as if your deliverance is not happening. It's happening. It's being prolonged, yes. But it's prolonged because of the battles that you need to fight and because of the value, the asset that is deposited in that star. It's not small. So many lives are connected to it. A five star is a destiny changer. A seven star is a deadly star. Nations are connected to it. Generations are connected to it. And you think the devil will leave you? No. He will fight you. I mean fight you. Mean fight you. Naked fight you. Hmm? But the more you fight, the more you discover who you are. The more you discover who you are, the more you recover who you are. The more you recover who you are, the more you come nearer to your destiny. Amen. That is the way. And not, don't you forget it. So, when you start misbehaving, little, little misbehaving, I never knew he meant anything. It's when you pray, pray, pray. I say, ah, Lord, why? Is this? What is? I say, ah. I say, little things like this. Ah. There was one I learned yesterday. After now, I don't understand it. I'm so, I say, I can't believe it. And it has to do with a little child. I say, child, also. I, I, up to now, I can't tell you I know it. I just saw it yesterday. I don't know it. I still have to go and look for it in the scriptures to, to be sure. But it's a new one. I don't know it. And I want to know it. I stayed all through yesterday to know it. Mind yourself. You, if you are a star, five, seven, your inner mind will always talk. Even when they gave you a wrong mind, that inner mind is difficult to store. They don't suppress it. It's too big. Because many lives are connected to it. Too. So it will always tell you, but you will always put it down. Because it's soft. It doesn't, it doesn't push you. Mm -mm. It doesn't argue. Mm -mm. It doesn't, it's not forceful. But mm -mm. well, you just whisper one small word. Don't do it. You will not say it again. Then I will say, do it, do it, now, do it, hey, it's good, do it. You say, ah, okay, yeah. But that, don't do it. Elijah was waiting for God. He didn't come in the storm. He didn't come in the fire. He didn't come in the thunder. He came with a small, still voice. That is the voice of your conscience. The voice of your inner man. Don't ever tell me you don't have it. It speaks to you. But we always, including me, I'm still learning. You, 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 we push it down. Okay. I want to reveal today. I want to tell you. You see this pastor? I'm a seven star. Yeah. I can't attract a seven star if I'm not. I just told you. So I know what I'm talking. I learned by experience. I made a lot of mistakes because I didn't know it. And you are learning from my mistakes. You better learn fast. The way you present yourself identifies your star to you. Connects the angels of your start to you. I can preach it another day, but not today. A lot. The same with association. A lot. Examples are there in the Bible. Plenty. You know, I, I was telling somebody, I said, go and get the car. He said, I said, go and get this car. Then I said, the person, I said listen, listen, let me, let me tell you. This car is no car. It's the key to your destiny. 
You see, I said, there are symbols of key in the spirit. Some of you, it can just be one shoe. You just wait. I, I see, I have seen many. I will see them wear that shoe. I say, God is opening the door for you. I will walk away. In a few, it will happen. Why? Because that shoe is the opener. It's a shoe, yeah, ordinary shoe. But it has a connection, an elevated connection, spiritual language that it speaks to your star and the door will open. Things begin to happen. Don't ask me how. I don't know how, but I know it does. Every time I break it, I pay hard. I pay. I pay. And I didn't know what it was. I thought it was witches, witches. It's not all of them the witches. No. Some of them are things we do. Because we don't know. Mm. One day God looked at me and said, this is, you see this color? I didn't choose it. The color of the church. We have two colors that God showed me. The one you don't wear now, we'll soon get it. Deep blue, different one, is the color of this ministry. And this one, this, uh, is it maroon? God said, this is the color. When he shows me coming to this altar, this is what I wear. Full color. And I asked him, he said, that is the color of your anointing. And that is anointing that runs in this ministry. Amen. So if I go and wear you white now or green, you will not even be able to sing. You want us to try it? I can try it too. Just wear. You see all of you. you they will just finish you. Arrow will just have two, 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 two. Arrow will call ambulance or will start crying. You can't do it. Or we remove this. Uh, no. But it didn't show me on time. Eh? It took time. Before it showed me. As you discover, you will recover. Amen. And the more you recover, you become a... You are almost close to performing your destiny. It is... That's why deliverance does not end. Oh, Pastor, I stay too long. No, no, you are not. Every time you pray, you recover. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes you see certain things. And then you solve that problem. Then nothing changed. Everything looks like normal. No, everything has changed. It's just a matter of time. Like I said, very soon, wedding will begin to run in this church like crazy. In Jesus. I think one will be announced today itself. Amen. Number five. Uh, so before I go to number five, stop being ordinary. Any five star that goes ordinary, die. I, you are not going to steal. But you see, if you want to buy that cloth, eh? if you have money for ten clothes, trash, eh? buy two that have quality. That's your star. I just told you the secret. If it's the only one you have, wash it. Make sure it's nice. As long as you wash it and keep it nice, and keep it nice, and keep it nice. Very soon they will change it. They will remove it. You see yourself change. I'm tired. I'm... They will just, you will lose. They will take everything. Empty you. You have disagreed with your Therefore, they have a, a, a spiritual right to take it. <laughs> whether you do it for me, it's not for me. They, they are waiting for you to do it anyway. So they will take it. it it's, it's a wicked thing. It's not, there's no mercy there. No mercy. So you need to be, you know the language. Or you will just be draw, dry, dragging and dragging for years and your life will not move. Is that what you want? Say, I reject it. In Jesus' name. So, you don't have to steal. You don't have to be greedy. You don't. Mm -mm -mm. If it's one, keep it neat. Keep it well. 
and believe God. Don't, don't settle for that one. Believe God for the one that corresponds with your star. Because if you are in this church, nobody, if you have three stars, you will not stay in this church. You will run. It, no matter how you try. After a while, you will go. We don't call them back. We just let them go. Once you find out that you are okay, we let you go. I shall not die. I shall live. <laughs> Number five. Stinginess. Aradite super glue hand. You know, every time we saw stringiness, I thought it has to do with money. I was wrong. Okay, let me show you the one that will make you shout. I noticed that if you are generous with your effort, God blesses you. Your own effort to get something. You are generous with it. You don't have limitation. You are ready to make every effort for that thing. Bah, you have it. I said, hmm. Then I started checking in the Bible. I saw it so. He saw failed because he didn't make effort. He said, when you are restless, I will give it back to you. Isn't what? He was never restless. He settled for less. He didn't get it. I saw his, uh, Gehazi. He was in a hurry. He didn't want to uh, be generous in serving his master. He wanted to get rich. The master is poor. Forgetting that anointing is bigger than wealth. What did it happen? He ended up a leprous. Many. Once you are not general, you see, God blesses effort. You see effort you make. Heaven counts it. The value of your effort is greater than the money you have. That's why church workers are blessed beyond measure. Once you are open and you are doing it genuinely. Why? Because of that effort. Heaven recognizes effort. Effort is prized. Precious. So if you are stingy with effort, heaven will withdraw their hands. You will not get what you are looking for. If you are, some people call it sacrifice. You sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your effort to pray over something that you are looking for. He has had you, but you wait. You wait. You wait. You wait. The more effort you put is a proof of your faith to get it. It's a proof of your trust in the ability of God to provide it. So the more you put the effort, the more heaven is, have, is satisfied that you are qualified for that thing. And the more the hand of God is quickly releasing it to you. That's the power of effort. It's everywhere in the Bible. We don't have time to go there now, but that is true. But if you have this uh, uh, poverty mentality, no. A quick, 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 shortcut, quick, quick, quick. That's why they go to occult. Occult don't give people. If an occult gives you something, he has bought you. Occult is to steal. Occult is to take. When they take, they empty you. That's why they die, their children are poor. Their property dis disintegrates. Nobody gets it. How did you see an occult person that the child who is not occult inherited their property? It's a lie. If the child inherits the property, it means the child has become an occult, has yeah, paid the price already that they want. Then they will pass, start passing the thing to him. Otherwise, no. The thing will evaporate the way it came. Because they don't make effort. They just ask you to kill somebody, you kill. They will arrange it for you, you kill. They say that is effort. No. God wants you to wait for him. He wants you to endure. He wants you to survive that problem you have. Even in the middle of it, you are still trusting him. You are making, you are making effort that makes heaven to move. If you have a poverty mentality, you will never do it. You get frustrated. You, you give up. Mm. Everything is poor. I'm telling you the truth. Just effort. Not to talk of money. All of them, the same. 
the more generous you are, the more heaven hand is moved for you. Generous with your time, generous with your effort, in prayer, your effort, in prayer, there's no way that problem will not solve. The time you commit to that prayer is investment for that thing you are looking for. What did I say? The time you commit to that prayer is the investment of that thing you are looking for. And once you invest in something, you must get what you are looking for. Isn't that so? Yes. Eh? Yes. It's not a pyramid one, no. I mean, heaven's investment. Yes. And your own shall not go in smoke. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Okay, I have two scriptures. Proverbs 11. 24 to 25. Proverbs 11. 24 to 25. New King James. Yeah. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Is that clear? Amen. Is that clear? Amen. Good. I don't have to go into that. Now look at example I want to give in our lesson. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 24 to, 20, uh, to 30. Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 24 to 30. Yeah, what was the man? Uh, 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 listen to that scripture because you miss it. Because many of you are doing it. God gave you a talent. But you are stingy with your talent. They are looking for somebody who will do something in the house of God, but you could do it. But you are stingy with your talent. Even outside, certain things you could do, you are stingy with it. Heaven gave you the talent so that God will be glorified through it. But you hide it. You are stingy. And you saw what God did to that man. He buried his talent. Where did he end up? Destruction. It shall not be a story. You can read it up for yourself. We read this lesson. Do you remember? He said, why did you hide my money? Uh, Jesus used that word talent. And I like it because he has so many, uh, a lot of meanings. Talent is talent. We know talent as a talent, as a virtue. It could also be a currency. But the truth is that you, hide, you hit something that could have earned something. Because you are stingy with it, it didn't earn what it ought to have earned. There are people attached to your destiny. He's attached to my destiny. He's attached to my, you are all attached to my destiny. If yes, it's like that. When I was growing up, I didn't know it. Maybe somebody still said it, yeah, would. They said so many things. But if that talent is hidden, as it was hiding in diplomatic service for 24 years. I would have been a failure, even if I had money. There's a talent you have that you are stingy with. And once you are stingy with talent, you have poverty mentality. God looked and said, Moses, I put talent in so, so, and so, so, so. Send for them. They will help you to create everything that I have told you concerning the tabernacle they would design everything I have given them the spirit that they can do everything that I said and Moses sent for them one was even a foreigner the mother was Jewish the father was Sidonian am I communicating with somebody Amen. well you are hiding your talent Oh, Pastor, how did I have my talent? You refuse to explore, to know who you are. You, you refuse to step out, to be able to determine what you can do and what you cannot do. 
Did you ever try it? Oh, you just stay on the lane, the right lane. Everybody, people passed there before. They said there was no lion on it. So you pass there too because they said there's no lion on it. Yeah. Why don't you pass in the place where there's lion and kill the lion? Be the first person to kill the lion. David credential to be allowed to fight the Goliath of his destiny was the killing of a lion and a bear. If he did not say that, King Saul would never have allowed him to go and confront the Goliath. He would never be king. But he said, ah, the God. He said, your servant has killed a lion with bare hands and a bear. That God who gave me the lion and the bear will also give me the head of this man. The king said, allow him to go. Because he knew what it takes to kill a lion. See, if this man killed a lion, this young boy, then it's a match for that man. Let him go. Even as corrupted as King Saul was, he could read that and he give it. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Some of the time we spend here, people are forgotten it's Sunday. Yes, it looks useless. No, we are investing in time. Amen. See these testimonies coming. They don't look normal. Many testimonies are already on, I told you. So what we are teaching now is manifesting your, your testimony. Battle of manifestation. Because if you have poverty mentality, you will do the same thing that kept you where you were. And your glory will not show. So what are you coming to church for? No, a church is a clinic where those who are spiritual say come and they meet Jesus and the master Jesus will give them injection that will take them to their destiny. You heard the German man say it. Is it not so? Uh -huh. Say my testimony shall be greater than any other person's own. I think I should say it for myself. Oh Lord, you heard me now. The last one, number six. A person, and this is where all of us almost fall into it. A person who has a poverty mindset hates instruction. Instruction that challenges his habit. Instruction that challenges his lifestyle. Instructions that we challenge that unprofitable lifestyle he's living. He doesn't like that instruction. And many people have told, do this, do that. Ah, Pastor, sorry, I didn't do it. I'm sorry. Oh, now things are hotting up. You remember? That's not a, 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 a creative mindset. Or a mindset that I've been saved. No. Something is wrong with that mindset. Is dominated by powers and it's termed poverty mindset. Once you don't take instruction, you will never make it in life. Instruction is the way of life. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18, that's where I stop. Proverbs 13, 18. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18. Yeah. New King James. Uh -huh. Poverty and shame yeah. will come to him who disdains correction. Yeah, that. But he who regards a rebuke will be honored. Yeah, that. Say, poverty, it shall not be a story. Yeah. Once you don't take instruction, nothing will change it. You can pray, they can lay hands on you. Instruction is the one that directs to greatness. If it's not. Yeah. Is it translation? Uh -huh. If a man refuses to learn, he will be poor. Uh -huh. It seems like a fool. Uh -huh. But you may tell another man that he is doing wrong things and he may listen to you. He may think that your words are important. People will think that he is a great man. Yeah. Once you can take instruction, believe me, your, your problem is temporary. Instruction, not anyone that uh, Mekuru told you or Tate or Mekuru or Tate Wataba told you. Instruction. Look at that woman. They bought this woman mattress. I was listening to 
in, uh, Facebook. They bought this woman mattress and they not. Or oh, bed, yeah. The moment they brought the bed, the woman died. Eh? Now, why is it? <laughs> I can tell you one thing that happened to that woman. She crossed a dead a red line. If she had received instruction, she would be alive. Because God would say, uh, do like this. He will withhold that bed. He will not give it to you. He will say, do like this. Then when you do like that, he will release the bed. Now when you release the bed, you will enjoy it. That's why the blessings of God make it rich and has no sorrow. Instruction. So when they tell you, do like this. If you told the woman, no, you need to do this or do that. There's a covenant you need to break. Come and break it. Do like this, do like this. Ah, you will go to which doctor? Your ancestors say they are hungry. <laughs> uh, bring them two chicken with some uh, bompani one, one bag. Um, your pension for this year. Okay. Uh, okay, then they will uh, they will be happy with you again. Eh, what? They will do that one, but when it's instruction from God, mm, that pastor wants to take my money. And truly, there are pastors that take people's money, and there are many. Those are not pastors. It's the same agents of darkness that put those people and call them pastors so that they can make you to lose faith in God. So you don't go to God, you go to the devil. Because that pastor did that. No, no, no. Salvation is personal. If every church is the same, we don't have problem in this world. Just look at your finger. Are they the same? Eh? Then you should know. Some are called. Some call themselves. And that's where the problem is. So they make you not to take instruction. The important instruction that will change your, their destiny. Look at what the Lord revealed for this old man now. He was about to go to the one that they just want to end his life. He's fighting to be different. You can see why must he be different? Why must he be different? He's free and he's free forever. There is a power there. They are buried things there. They have refused to remove the last one. If you go to school tomorrow, they will reconnect. So, what you will do? See me. If I say it now, they will change their mind. Did you hear me? They have paid for your brain. They have paid for it. Up and coming politicians have paid for it. Not only in Namibia. So many places. They've already paid. They made all the ritual they paid. So it's paid for, spiritually paid for. So they are waiting to harvest. They shall harvest their own death. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody gave them information of what was said here. So they, they found, checked, and that's what there is. Why? Because in a very short time, you're going to hit a mark that will give you international scholarship. Amen. From there. Amen. They don't want it to. You see this structure? If you don't obey it, you know coconut that doesn't have water, that they have removed the inside. That's how they want to make you. It shall not happen, it shall not take place. Amen. If you are here, 
and you have difficulty with instruction, stand up. Put your hand on your head before I make a call. And be looking. Ask God to forgive you first. Now, as I'm making another call, be asking God to forgive you. I'll make another call, then we'll pray. If you are here, you are not born again. Or you're online, you are not born again. This is your chance. If you are here, just come in front here and receive Jesus. Don't fail instructions, eh? Instruction is the way of life. If you are wise, that is how it is seen by the way you accept instruction. Wisdom shows so. So, the wisest thing you can do is to receive, your, uh, receive Jesus, be born again. Then your life will change. You have had the testimonies. Come and receive Jesus. Clap for that sister that is coming. Clap for her, somebody. If you are there, come and receive Jesus. And come and be born again. That's what I mean. Come and be born again. Come and be born again. I'm going to count only three. You are like, get ready. You want to be born again? Get ready. You are here. You want to be born again? Just. Uh, I'm going to count three. Make sure you're here before I finish. Number one. Number two. You want to be born again? Clap for that, brother. Come, 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 come. My dear, just be bold. Come, come and be born again. Jesus died for you. Without Jesus, you have no life. Some people are living and say, we don't need Jesus. It's a lie. Without Jesus, you have no life. You are living a life that Satan wants you to live. I don't care how successful you are. Without Jesus, you are a failure. Are we there? Number two. Remaining one count. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and be born again. Number three. And the church say amen. So two of you here, are you online? Put your hand on your chest and repeat after me. Say, Father, I confess my sins. I repent of them all. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose for my salvation. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Take away my sins. Wash me with your blood. Make me a new person. Thank you for doing so. By faith, I know I am now born again. I will serve you forever. In the name of Jesus. Satan, bye. You and your works, bye bye. Jesus, welcome into my life. I surrender to you forever in Jesus name. Amen. If you say that you are born again, you are a child of God, all your sins are washed away, you now have a new life, you hear you online. So for you online, please look on our ice cream, on our screen and all the platforms where we are. You see the books that are on display and the ice store, please connect and get those books, get yourself a Bible you need you need a Bible a good one study Bible is very good, start studying you can start from the book of John till Revelation, then you go back to start from Genesis to Malachi, to finish the New Old Testament and you will never be the same and you can connect to us anywhere you are, you online connect to us, you here you are welcome to be a, a member. You are now my brother, my sister. You are blessed. They will talk to you later after the service and some other things that will help you. God bless you. You are now a new person. Everything you did before, you are free. You are now free by the blood of Jesus. Clap for them as they go back. 
clap for them as they go back.